welcome back. If you are watching this video, it should be because you have just come from watching how to annotate a text. Um, and we did that through this article, Stem the Carnage. If you are not familiar with the article, I recommend you pause the video here and you read it as best you can through the notes um, and check out what notes I've got written around there. All right, so let's get started. What we're gonna do is you're gonna head over to Compass and you're going to head into our study material section for language analysis. And you're going to open up the block structure planning document. That's what I've got written here. We are only doing one text, so we are not going to worry about this section here for text two. All right, background of the issue. We find that through the opening of this text. I was shocked and disgusted to hear about last week's fatal shark attack near Esperance in Western Australia. My heart goes out to the family of Neil Timms, in particular his younger brother, James, who watched helplessly while his brother was attacked. All right, so there's my background. Neil Timms was attacked and killed by a shark off the coast of Esperance in WA in 2015. And we know the date thanks to the handy little date stamp at the bottom. All right, summer 2015. Not a new text, but a great one for us to be looking at. Title of text, Stem the Carnage. Author, Sam Forsyth. Publication details, we don't know these. Um, actually, you know what we do know? We know that it was January 2015. The contention, thanks to my careful annotations I've got, right, which is that we should kill sharks, uh, cull sharks, they've said kill, we should cull sharks in order to preserve our way of life. Sharks should be kill, culled to preserve the Australian way of life. Actually, I think it says something about repeat offenders. Calling a few of these predators. Da, 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 da. Maybe not. Serial offender man eaters. It's not clear if they mean just specifically the serial offender shark eater, so I'm going to leave it as a, um, a general statement at this point. All right, and then the main sort of tones within it are quite negative. All right, and that's me planned for my introduction. Um, the only thing I don't have in there, which I wanna make note of, is the audience. So add that in. Um, and we've already mentioned that our audience comprised of WA government, families and victims, beachgoers and business owners. So, Tourism business. Families, victims of shock attacks. Great. All right. So now that I've got my introduction planned, I'm going to move on to my first body paragraph. And I'm actually only going to write one body paragraph today, even though there are a few different arguments. Um, I'm going to try to make this work. I'm going to skip this first sort of setting the scene context paragraph. You don't ever want to skip it when you write it, but I'm going to focus in on this second one here, which comprises of the image as well, just because it's probably a really good one for you to um, watch me do. So what I've got over here in red, thanks to my color coding, I know my red is my argument. So it's something about the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and should be stopped. So what is my argument? I need to use a non-neutral verb with it. So I'm going to just add in now the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. Um, let's see, of heat offending shark attacks. Shark 
No, I don't like that. I'm getting rid of that. The frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. Now I want to include a non-neutral verb in there, as indicates up here. So guys, head to Compass, and you're going to download the non-neutral verbs PDF. That's going to give you a great list to work from. All right, and I'm going to just pick one here. Um, it's probably not a positive. It's an arguing, something that he wants. Um, argues. Yeah, I'm going to stick with argues. I think it probably is the most relevant. Or even champions. It's quite a rational argument for the most part before it gets quite alarmist down the bottom. So I'm going to go with argues because I think that fits best. Argues that the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. All right, tone words within this argument. Tone words are in blue, alarmist, um, and a language device I want to use. Um, I think the one that's probably most relevant, particularly to this alarmist tone is going to be this appeal to fear up here, particularly coupled with the strong statements that I've identified of, you know, serial man eater, serial offender, man eater, culprit, killed, etc. So I'm going to go with appeal to fear. Um, what I've done is I've split screened and now I'm looking for my evidence to support where the appeal to fear and the alarmist tone come from. So I'm going to need some evidence. So uh, the alarmist tone I've said sort of comes in down here around um, sort of killed, shark attack victims, etc. cetera. Um, as well as so frequent. Okay, so tone alarmist. These attacks seem so frequent. Um, even serial offender man eaters. So I think the best one of those is going to be they must be destroyed. So I'm going to pull the others out and I'm going to put them down here because they're quite linked. This alarmist tone and this appeal to fear. These attacks seem so frequent. Serial offender man eaters. I'm going to just join these, I think. Eaters should be tracked down and killed. And those are going to work really nicely as my appeal to fear, my evidence of appeal to fear. But I also want to talk about, if you note back over here, where we've got the repetition of so unexpected, so sudden, so frequent. I'm going to... I also want to make note of the personification of the shark. Um... Oops, I just want to indent that because um, we've called him a culprit, often used to describe serial killers or any kind of criminal. Um, then so sudden, so unexpected, so frequent. Repetition. Ugh. Okay. 
So, you can see I've got a lot of thoughts, and I often have a lot of thoughts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to think about the effects of these things. So, this alarmist tone and the appeal to fear really joined together. So, why have they used an alarmist tone? Um, I'm going to start... So, does it, it sort of starts almost in a rational manner. Vaguely rational, anyway. Oh, I think it's too thick. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave it with alarmist because it does really quickly transition. Um, I'm not going to forget that that exists. So I'm just going to maybe make myself a little bit of a note just here. I'm going to do it in a different color. Starts, oops, starts in a vaguely um, reasonable reasonable tone with seventh fatality in four years um, and also through I'm not a beach goer myself but quickly yeah no, the quickly transition no come on because I'm going to use my meta language, but quickly shifts to an alarmist one signified by the use of the phrase alarming statistic. Okay, I'm just going to make a note of that down here. Now, why? So I'm going to go back to my original tone of. Um, alarmist. Why have they used an alarmist tone? By being alarming, you're increasing urgency. Increasing urgency around this issue. To, so if you create a sense of urgency, sorry guys, I'm just thinking out loud. So if you create a sense of urgency, you are attempting to obviously get people on side that's always the point of these things is to persuade an audience um a sense of urgency around the issue and i think that's going to position the reader to be more receptive to the idea of culling which is a little bit generic, but it's kind of position is it's sort of putting them in the right frame of mind to maybe agree with it. And then in terms of the persuasive device, particularly with the appeal to fear and the personification working together, and I'm going to make a note of that. So appeal to fear working with the personification increases the reader's like, oops, of uh, yeah no so the personification draws direct parallels in the reader's mind between sharks and non predators, i.e., murderers. It's a very human term, murderers. Um, which feeds the appeal to fear. The repetition of the so sudden, so unexpected, so frequent, which feeds the appeal to fear through the repetition of so sudden, so unexpected, so frequent to position the reader. Or, um, I don't know if I want to say, I feel like I, so if 
spark a sense. Now, see, I've said sense of urgency up here. That's not what I want to say. Because what I'm thinking is that all of these things work together really well. So they've personified it, they've made this beast something that a human can understand and be scared of. So you've got scared people, and when people are scared, they lash out. And that's essentially what this, this author wants them to do. He wants them to lash out and cull sharks. Not even just cull them, but they must be destroyed. And I need to use that, must be destroyed. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this, I think, for now. Maybe not. All right, hang on. Okay, so I'm going to just go to here. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to draw it in. So it's personification. Oops. Um, if I talk about the appeal to fear, this positions the audience to... Uh, that's really colloquial. I'm not going to say lash out. To lash out and increase their like oh, of supporting a shark culling. Um, it must be destroyed. Personalizes the issue. Personalizes the issue coupled with the earlier. So I, hopefully that won't cut out, good. So just take a minute and pause to read what I've written in there. Um, argues that the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. It's an alarmist tone, starts vaguely reasonably and then quickly shifts. We've got an appeal to fear and personification. All right, appeal to fear, they must be destroyed. So personification, uh, get my alarmist tone, they must be destroyed. I repeated myself, but that's okay. And then personification. They must be destroyed. These attacks seem so frequent. Serial offenders, man eaters, should be tracked down and killed. Culprit, so sudden, so unexpected, so frequent. All right, so increasing urgency around the issue to position the reader to be more receptive to the idea of culling. In the personification, draws direct parallels in the reader's mind between sharks and the known predators, positions the audience to lash out and increase their likelihood of supporting a shark culling. They must be destroyed, personalizes the issue, coupled with the earlier motive appeals and connection to family. And by that, I'm referring to the very first statement, um, supports the above positioning. All right, so from my plan, now what I need to do is turn that into a paragraph, which is pretty easy now that I've done a lot of the legwork and the thinking around it. I'm just going to get a new page and I'm going to get started. Um, to start me off, I'm going to just pull out the um, argument statement and then I'm just going to adjust it. So, Forsyth in their first argument, nah, in their second paragraph argues that the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. All right, and then I'm going to use this. Okay. All right. 
Um, beginning paragraph in a reasonable tone Forsyth states that the death of Neil Timms is the I'm just going to pop my quote in there. Seventh fatality in four years. Before quickly shifting to an alarmist tone signified by the use of the phrase alarming statistic. I'm just going to check in because when you're doing it, you want to really transition through the argument rather than just picking out one or two little things. All right, so this is what scares me more than anything. So even though I haven't added that into my plan, um, I want to talk about how she's personalising the issue because I do sort of mention that a little bit further down, personalising the issue with the personification. Um, Forsyth then personalises personalises the issue by describing their own reaction to shark attacks as um, as I can't do a direct quote because it just doesn't work. Both like then personalize the issue when describing their own reaction to shark attacks is scary. This theme continues through the argument as a appeal to the readers fear through the personification of these sharks calling them them referring to them as culprits a term usually reserved for I'm usually reserved for willful criminals. To further reinforce this, Forsyth. Serial offender man eaters the use 
of the word kilt yeah, as opposed to cult, which is used later in the article and in the text, suggests Use of the word killed here as opposed to cult, which is used later in the text, suggests that this is a personal issue rather than a rather than one doesn't and by positioning the reader by positioning the reader mm, out. I'll have to come back and fix that because I don't like it. It's too colloquial, too informal. I want to go back through and just read what I've done. Does it make sense? I don't know. Forsyth in their second paragraph argues that the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. I'm fine with that. Beginning the paragraph in a reasonable tone, Forsyth states that the death of Neil Timms in the is the seventh fatality in four years before quickly shifting to an alarmist tone, signified by the use of the phrase an alarming statistic. Forsyth then personalises the issue by describing their own reaction to shark attacks as scary. This theme continues through the argument as they appeal to the reader's sense of fear through the personification of these sharks, referring to them as culprits, a term usually referred to willful criminals, reserved for willful criminals, not reserved to, reserved for willful criminal, criminals. Who commit <laughs> to further reinforce this? Forsyth explains that these serial offender man eaters should be tracked down and killed. The use of the word killed here, as opposed to culled, which is used later in the text, suggests that this is a personal issue rather than one that does not affect many people. Thereby positioning the reader to lash out and increase their likelihood. No, I don't like that last bit. It's the last bit that I don't like. Um, the use of the word killed as opposed to culled suggests that um, increases the sense of urgency in the reader to demand something be done about shark related deaths quickly. All right. So I got my what? I'm just going to highlight reasonable tone. How um, in terms of personalizing the issue, I suppose that's another little what, and the rest of that is a bit more of a how. Sense of fear. So what through the personification of these sharks, referring to them as culprits? usually reserved for criminals. And then 
this is kind of a little bit of a Y. Meaning the only Y is right at the end, and I'm thinking there needs to be more Y potentially up here through the tone. By beginning in this manner, Forsyth increases the urgency around this issue to position the reader to be more receptive to the idea of culling, which introduced towards the end of this paragraph. Now it's a little bit repetitive. I've got urgency around this issue. Use the word killed here as opposed to, I'm going to say further. Further increases the sense of urgency in the reader to demand something be done. All right, so reading back over it to see if I'm happy. Forsyth in their second paragraph argues that the frequency of shark attacks is increasing and needs to be stopped. Beginning the paragraph in a reasonable tone, Forsyth states that the death of Neil Timms is the seventh fatality in four years, before quickly shifting to an alarmist tone signified by the use of the phrase an alarming statistic. By beginning in this manner, Forsyth increases the urgency around this issue. No, Forsyth establishes establishes the urgency around this issue to position the reader to be more receptive to the idea of culling which is introduced towards the end of the paragraph. Forsyth personalises the issue by describing their own reaction to sharks as scary. This then continues through the argument as they appeal to the reader's sense of fear through the personification of these sharks, referring to them as culprits, a term usually reserved for willful criminals. Thereby suggesting Sharks, shark attacks are deliberate acts. The theme continues through the argument as they appeal to a real sense of fear. The theme continues through the argument as they appeal to the reader's sense of fear via the personification of these sharks, referring to them as culprits, a term usually reserved for willful criminals, thereby suggesting that shark attacks are deliberate acts rather than acts of nature. To further reinforce this, Forsyth explains that these serial offender man eaters should be tracked down and killed. Use of the word killed here as opposed to cult further increases the sense of urgency in the reader to demand something be done about shark related deaths quickly. All right, I'm relatively happy with that paragraph now. There's definitely more work that I can do with it, but in terms of a first draft, I'm happy with how that goes. Feel free to stop the video here, have another read, um, and absolutely go through and make your own changes to it. I would love to hear in the comments what you've changed it to. Um, let me know if you need any further help. Otherwise, good luck with your sack. Bye guys.